first play of of Herbig open chest under inside arm. So um, let's watch him. He's the right guard, number sixty seven. So the thing the thing with with Herbig is, and, and on this play we can go through this one pretty quickly. He gets um, he gets into into his pass set. He does a relatively good job just splitting splitting his his defender, keeping that that inside out relationship. Um, the one thing that that we do not like on this play is how how not on guard his hands are. Again, when you're when you're talking about hands on guard, we want them you know pretty much like at your solar plexus area. Like coach, some coaches will teach like like rolling a tennis ball. Some will like teach like flip the the, the pancake. Some you know some are, are okay with you just running them a little bit wider. Doesn't really matter. Um, but you want those hands you know active and ready to go um, to shoot you know, kind of just like a, just like a boxer, you know, having your hands up and ready. Um, when your hands are, are wide and dropped like this, your chest is exposed. So his hands shoot late here. His, his, the, the carriage of his hands is not as proper or it's not, it's not proper. He gets his chest. Um, he gets his, he gets splashed, his chest taken. Now it's not the most powerful position from 90. He's kind of drifting out to the outside while pushing forward to, to, to Herbig. So it's not the most strong position. The thing that I do like about Herbig is his recovery. And this is a strong position he typically gets in where he's able to reach that left hand inside. And then when he reaches that left hand inside, he's able, he's able to land it into a good spot and he really gets underneath of it. And he, and he creates like that, that torque getting under, getting, getting his hips and his lower body underneath of that arm. You're going to see him kind of torque underneath of that arm. Powerful position to be in, off of the left, off of the left instep right there, the inside foot, torques him, or, or kind of torques him with that with that left hand, rides rides it out, um, or rides out that hand, pushes him up the uh, up, you know, up the arc into that gap, not allowing him him to push towards the quarterback because in a, in a situation like this, typically you'd assume okay he's going to get pressed into the quarterback, the the pocket's going to um, get pushed a little bit, but Again, with him getting that strong hand placement with the left hand, um, getting extension and riding it out on underneath or being underneath of that uh, that foot, that instep, powerful spot to be in. Again, uh, not the prettiest play necessarily, but in the beginning, I typically go a little bit more record happy. Um, and again, some of these plays, I'm just like trying to think about what I said last time while also talking about it. So it's going to get me a little bit uh, tripped up at times. It just, again, I, re I recorded the show twice already or one time twice coming. So, uh, her big double overlap eyes. So let's see again, simple play here by her big. Um, and the, the point of this is obviously there's a full slide. You have, you have a, or sorry, but you have a full, um, yeah, you have a full slide but it's really, it's a slide and gap protection. So you have, you have man and, and gap protection. Gap is more zone. Um, but man is okay. You know, he blocks him, he blocks him, you know, he blocks the next guy, whatever it's, it's manned up. You're, you're, you're assigned your guy. They're sliding in, in, in more of a zone um, blocking system. You could zone blocking system for pass blocking as well. Uh, but it's not like, teams who are like west coast heavy outside zone pass blocking it's, it's all depending on how they're how they're lined up so for him initially he shuffles in his gap protection again this is gap protection it's not necessarily sliding slide protection is is man um so i try to say shuffling in gap protection because gap protection is more zone that's what they're doing um it's just natural to say when they're moving laterally sliding but that, i i have to avoid that because that's not what it really is um so he shuffles he shuffles in his gap protection um he knows that his right tackle is, is, is working um, to his right side and tight to his right side. So he doesn't have to reach for contact for, for number 95 right here. And also the center is picking up 90. So he's really nothing to block at this moment in time. And the thing that he uses is um, it's, it's like a double overlap or it's really one overlap and, and a drag hand. And all he's doing with, with that is, um, is both protecting the B gap here that, that drag hand is protecting the B gap. He could see, he could see him, he could see 95 uh, Jones, so if he presses towards that, that B gap or presses towards the, the tackle, his hand is out. So it's ready to, to, to make contact. Um, and if his eyes are to come off of that, that hand is now protecting that B gap where he can't see it, but he'll feel it. So he'll react to it. He's not going to push right by him without him noticing. So if his eyes do take, come off again, that's protecting that B gap and this overlap for the center. Um, not, not saying that the center could play this, this block or he could play this block differently. Uh, it's, it's a little bit harder when it's tight to explain, but He's basically letting the center know, hey, I am, I am to your, I am to your right. 
Um, I have the A gap. Uh, if you need me to assist, I'm I'm here. That's basically what that, what that hand is telling him. He's telling him that that offensive lineman if he's there. If you if we were to kind of play a situation out where that where that would work, um, where that would work out. Okay, let's say he's setting he's setting to the, to his left. Number ninety is not engaged with him, and ninety shoots across his face. Now Kelsey would have the flexibility to look to the outside because he knows that his his guard is to his right because of that overlap technique. So. It allows it can, it, again. It can allow him to pick up different things in the zone because of that overlap. So uh, again, hopefully, I explained that well, uh, or at least relatively well. Going through it a second time, just sometimes it gets a little bit sketchy. But we have overlap slash uh, drag hand, but it's a really good um, technique to use if you're not going to be engaged. Again, just assisting your offensive lineman. Now we're seeing both guys separate in terms of 90 and 95. He keeps active eyes, checks 95. Okay, 95 is expanding. Don't need to block him. Check 90. Okay, 90 is expanding. I don't want to check that, or I, I don't want to com- um, completely commit to that. A little bit of overlap again with the center. Checks 95 again. Just seeing anything that is going to be threatening to the quarterback. Um, gets hands on 95. Obviously, there's, there's some movement and stuff like that, but it's a good job keeping active eyes, uh, uh, active eyes and not necessarily committing to um, anything that he doesn't need to commit to. Um, Herbig, Gap Pro. Oh, so he's in a slide and gap protection, um, split overlap. Okay. It's very, very small stuff in pass production. That were, that were, again, not every block is just one-on-one pancaking a guy, um, little things like this and, and gap protection and being, and being gap disciplined, um, splitting the difference between offensive line and getting proper depth. That stuff matters too. Um, it does. It matters just as much as the, as the flashy, sexy pancake blocks. So, we have another situation where um, the offensive line is is shuffling in their gap protection. They're all they're all shuffling to the to the left um, to vacate. Basically, it works as like a it's a, it's like a string, right? Where the guard the guard pulls um, on play action, and he has to shuffle to his left to protect to protect that gap. He shuffles to protect his gap. He shuffles to protect his gap. So um, they all shuffle. Again, Herbig does not want to reach for contact for 98 because he knows he has the he has the right tackle, um, and there may be a threat to his left. So um, he uses a drag hand again because now his eyes aren't on that gap. But if he presses up, he'll feel that he'll attach to that block. So good job with the drag hand, um, splitting the difference between the start, the center and the and the right tackle as as best he can, while staying semi square, um, allowing him to play both ways. Again, active drag hand picks up 98 again. Doesn't completely commit to that block because 99 is still is still a threat to him, but he gets a hand in there just enough for the right tackle to get back uh, to get back in on that block. Because if his hand wasn't there, maybe the right maybe the right tackle is not able to to refit his hands, get it uh get a good hand placement in terms of just attacking the center of gravity, moving him. Now Herbig assisted, his outside half is still clear for 99. Picks up 99 as well. So he's not the key man on either block, but he, he literally splits himself basically down the middle, assisting both of his offensive linemen on both blocks, gets, gets hands on both of them, again, movement and stuff like that. Um, but hell of a job picking up two guys right there, right? You know, and it's because, of, it's because of active eyes, active drag hand um, right there, which it does exactly what we talked about it doing, just being ready for a punch and, and uh, attaching to a guy if, if he is to, 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 uh, to try to knife through that gap. Picks up another. It's, it's a good job. Herbig struggle to match. Um, we're going to see some plays of him and his him not necessarily have bad technique, but his his physical capability is limited. He's not the best athlete in the world, um, and that's probably understated. He's probably one of the more of the slow guards I've ever seen, just being transparent. So let's see struggles to match. Yeah, it's it's typically laterally like guys crossing his face. He's not he's not always going to be able to match it. So. He gets into his pass set again, similar as the first play. We don't like the fact that it, that his hands are are as wide as they are. Um, and another situation where he goes to throw that it's it's his the underneath punch, just like the first time, is is it's it's coming late, but he's trying to to latch it in there and really get like almost like scoop and roll under that under that block. I'm getting a call from work, so I have to pause. All right, sorry. Continuing on. Um, Hopefully, yeah, YouTube might catch that too. But it is what it is. Sometimes I got to pause. I can't. I can't necessarily not answer work. But um, 
here we go. So struggles to match again, gets into his pass set. We don't like the fact that his hands, that his hands are dropped. He ends up getting, he ends up getting splashed um, this time with a little bit more forward momentum. So last time the guy was kind of not com- completely committed to um, the bull rush. This time the guy is moving a little bit more forward. So it's, it's, it's going to affect him a little bit more um, with that hands, not going to be able to land cleanly. So bull rush, which ends up attacking his inside half and Herbig at this point, you'd hope he'd be able to, absorb that contact, drop the post foot, um, which would become the kick step now, but we're calling about, we're talking about dropping the post post foot, drop that flip your hips back inside, um, get hands back on the guy, hopefully attack the hip right here, drive him laterally and, and, and move him obviously out of the track of, of getting the sack on the quarterback. Um, but for him, when there is quick lateral movement, he's not going to be the best in terms of just being able to get his feet under the block. So he gets initially popped. If he had a little bit more athleticism, maybe he's able to move um, underneath that block and cover it. He's not able to. Um, there is going to be, again, plays where it's not necessarily the, the, the worst uh, technically, but just because of the lack of athleticism, it's going to hurt him a little bit, which, by the way, didn't talk about it before. Again, uh, going through this a second time, uh, I should have mentioned his size in the games I watched, but he's 24 years old, 6'4", 334, 33 inch arms, and one fourth. Um, I watched the games he played the most or, or the games he played a significant role, um, which was weeks four, eight, 12, 13, 15, 16, and 17. Um, Herbig Sackalag pa- uh, passive chest. The thing I bring up at, in the weaknesses that I want you guys to note initially, and especially at first, it seems like he was slower to start the year weeks, like four, eight, nine, whatever I was just saying. Um, I don't know if he, officially was on the injured list or, or if he was on it, he, he was on a list that showed he was injured. If he got injured in camp or in preseason or anything like that, to me, it looked like he got more athletic as the year went on. So I think he was battling some type of, of ailment. I don't know exactly what it was, but that's what I would guess. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe they can, nobody's going to ask him and confirm that, but I think he was battling an injury. So sack allowed passive chest. Here we go. Number 67. But by the way, I think this is 35 plays. So not the longest review ever, but still, uh, I got a two-hour Whitehead one and a two-hour Martin one. That I, re- I didn't tell you about this one. Uh, you'll figure out on the next review, but Martin, I already recorded the first hour of it twice. So now I have to record Martin, the, the beginning 20 plays, three times. My third time doing the first 20 plays of Martin. Uh, sack allowed, passive chest. Here we go. Right guard. So this – he – we have – okay, okay, so we, we have – Zoning here, right tackle, lock. Gilligan, he's on an island with a backside, okay? So Herbig uses an overlap because he's, again, assisting, assisting the center, letting him know, hey, I got your right side. But to a cert- at, at a certain point, when you're, seeing, when you're seeing aggressive steps up the field, you can't use that overlap technique, and you have to be a little bit more forceful with your hands. So he ends up using an overlap, that overlap, and just the, it, it – Turns it, it turns into him having a, a late punch, late punch, hands wide, splashed. You get he gets his chest, he gets his chest taken right there. Um, again, too much emphasis on the on the overlap. Um, and just in general, just in general, even without the overlap, sometimes he drops his hands and he get he gets splashed here regardless. So we want to see more more aggressive hands, uh, better punch location, gets his chest taken. Um is never able to, to refit his hands. We're seeing his hands high the entire time, hands high the entire time. The offensive lineman, or sorry, the defensive lineman is able to push him, push him back enough where then he's able to cross his, his, his horizontal plane because if he's, tight, if he's tight to you, he has tight hands, he's not going to be able to cross across your face because you have tight hands. If you're extended now, your arms aren't in, a, in as strong of a spot, so he's going to be able to cross your face. So pushes him back to cross his face, crosses his face, um, he allows a sack. Now, in terms of the the passive, it's just it's just the hands, and we need to see him attempt to refit his hands, even after the fact. You know, 